Hey guys, Tony here. Friday night, I went to my friend Leo's place to check out his home theater 2.0. You may remember Leo from a tour I did earlier this year, and while it was a fantastic room, Leo had plans to put his speakers behind the screen and change some of the aesthetics of the room. And I will tell you that the results are absolutely phenomenal. Make sure you smash the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more home theater related content. And if you'd like to join an ever-growing community, I have links to my Discord server down in the description as well. I can't wait to share this one with you guys, so let's get into the tour. So the dimensions of the room are 3.8 meters wide by 5.5 meters long and 2.7 meters high. And we have a riser at the back to cater to two rows of seating. Leo was determined to change the look of the room to have a wedge shaped design inspired by one of his favorite YouTubers, Lars from Hollywood Zuhauser. And he put in a ton of work with his brother-in-law to fabricate the wedges, which also have absorbing and diffusion properties. They also hide the side surround speakers as well. The wedges were then covered in speaker cloth and have some LEDs down the side to shine and create the ambience that Leo was after. Leo also did the roof acoustic panels, which have absorbers and diffusers. We also have more absorption and a custom made diffuser on the back wall. And even the back of the door is treated for absorption. Acoustically, I will say that this is one of the best rooms I've heard with pinpoint accurate sound and I describe the room as lively, but no echo at all. The LED lighting is another feature of this room, and I really like the way Leo has incorporated lighting into the room. One of the things he told me in our previous tour was that he wanted to have a floating screen, or the appearance of a floating screen, which he has managed to achieve using LEDs, which are all controlled through Amazon Alexa. For seating, we have the Optimus recliners from Amart, which are a single seat recliner pushed next to each other and are nice and comfortable for movie time. Leo has calibrated the center seat as the king's chair for the best audio experience. For the projector, we have my dream projector, which is the JVCN7 and has been calibrated by Leo, who is really into the technical aspects of home theater. He has this picture looking like an OLED panel. I really enjoyed the eye candy in the demos that Leo played for me, especially the Hobbit, Desolation of Smash, the sharpness and the clarity of the image was insanely good. Leo also has heat extraction with a thermostat control above the projector to suck out the hot air when needed with the AC Infinity ecosystem. I'll have links in the description if you're interested to find out more. The screen is the Encore 135 inch Cinemascope screen provided by my good friend Mick from Sydney Hi-Fi Monovale who also provided the quick speakers and the AVM processor. And now that the speakers are behind the screen, the coherence between what you see and what you hear and the way that Leo has calibrated everything is incredibly immersive. The the screen appears like it's floating by having it mounted further out from the wall and the LEDs placed around the perimeter. For the speakers, we have a 9.2.6 configuration with the Crix Megaphonics flats as the main left, center, and right speakers. This was to achieve his vision of having the sound coming from the screen and having all of his bed channels at the same height. He built a shelf and framed out each speaker, getting the angles perfect for his main listening position, and then filled the gaps with acoustic material and then covered them up with speaker cloth. The Megaphonics flats are from the the Crix SX line of speakers and have a special sound coming from the waveguide which gives that cinematic sound that Crix speakers are known for. Leo has chosen the Phonix 45s for his front wides which have a bracket that allow them to be angled toward the listening position. Leo also has the Phonix 45s for surrounds but they are hidden by the acoustic panels. For the rear surrounds we have the Phonix on walls which have a 15 degree angle to them allowing them to sweep down past the back row to the front. The way that Leo has this room calibrated with the surround speakers is incredible. During A Quiet Place 2, the positional sound was on point. I could hear sounds coming from everywhere with a high degree of accuracy. The overhead speakers are the Atmospherics A20 with a 20 degree angle that allows the drivers to be aimed towards the seated position. This room has an incredible sound bubble and again, the way Leo has the room calibrated is fantastic. For LFE, Leo has kept his SVS PC13 barrel subs and with the amount of tactile response he gets from them, I can see why. Leo is a master with the Mini D 
PSP. He even helped me fix my own issues of bass nulls in my room, and he has his room dialed in exceptionally well. The bass isn't thick or heavy, but rather a very clean, tactile feel, almost like a thud that hits you and dissipates quickly. So I'll describe it as impactful. Overall, now with the quick speakers in a 15.2 configuration, this room sounds fantastic. Providing the processing for the home theater is the Anthem AVM70. This is a 16 channel processor and I think is one of the best processors you can get for the price tag. I've had a bit of experience with Anthem over the last year or so and one of the best features is the high frequency and vocals. They're very clear and precise. Leo being very technical has his AVM70 singing to perfection and the demos that I listened to sounded really good. Very clear especially in the voices and the dialogue. Leo has a huge amount of power running this setup, same as his previous setup with the Emotiva XPR5, which he has powering his center channel, surrounds, and the back surrounds. There is an Emotiva XPR2, which is used for the front wides, and another XPR2, which is for the front left and right. For the six overheads, we have three Crown XLS 1002s. Leo's rack is perfectly set up and has AC Infinity cooling built in, as well as the Furman power conditioner to provide clean power to the setup. There is a secondary rack, which which also has some additional electronics for media playback, which includes the Panasonic UBA20, a PlayStation 5, an Apple TV, and smart control with the Harmony Hub. Righto guys, what did you think of Leo's Home Theater 2.0? Let me know down in the comments section and show Leo some love by smashing the like button for him. I have links in the description to everything in this video, so check them out if you're interested. I'd like to thank Leo for having me over to experience his incredible room and for allowing me to share it with the community. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already, but that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.